following program is intended for mature audiences. The time is now for the hardest hit, yet completely trivial, football show on the planet. You are in rarefied territory. Ladies and gentlemen, well, well to the broken helmet. Let's rock. Hey, coming to you live on tape on this December 31st, New Year's Eve 2022. Tomorrow will be the dawn of a new year. And everybody will get to reflect back and think about what they could do better next year and what bets they could do better and what fantasy moves they could make that would help them get to the promised land and all that good reflective shit that you hear about every time it turns to be a new year. So, Chris, do you have any New Year's resolutions all set, ready to go as of right now? Two o'clock on New Year's Eve. Uh, We are talking about, we being my wife and I are talking about eliminating some of the sugar that we have all throughout the house. That's fun. Nothing like starting off the uh, New Year's with a health-related New Year's resolution. Okay, uh, that's good. That's good. I actually, I, I just came up with this, and I don't have anything well thought out, so I have nothing comical yet to say. But okay, sugar is a good thing. Um, I don't know what I would uh, like to do. Uh, I'll, I'll do the typical lose weight. That That's what I'd like to do, lose weight. So already, it's just fucking yucks. <laughs> Yuck it up here. <laughs> On New Year's Eve, <laughs> just delivering nothing but the laughs all day on uh, a, a good football podcast here, week 17, coming down upon us tomorrow. That'll be a good thing for New Year's Eve, right? You just get to sit. If you're young, you get to get shit-faced all night tonight, do something stupid, you know, spend money to... Do people even go into, like, the city anymore, whatever the city might be that you're around, New Year, you know... New York City or Miami or, you know, insert city. Here. Yes. I mean, yes. They, they still do that, right? And, you know, it's all a good time. Yeah, oh, my, I got to get a bus. My sister-in-law is here. And, and she's yeah. down to go to Miami or were they doing West Palm yeah. or what are they doing? No, they're 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 driving to Miami. Her and her uh, boyfriend slash fiance. I don't even know. Yeah, boyfriend, I think still. So. Yeah, so you get to just spend all kinds of crazy money, you know, get insanely drunk. You know, if you're single, maybe, you know, get a good hookup in with somebody, maybe a, a future significant other, maybe just some rando, you know, all the power to you. And then tomorrow you just get to work the hangover off by sitting on your couch and watching a full slate of NFL football, which, answer me this, is it or is not, it is it or is it not weird the way that the NFL has basically fallen on the winter holidays this year, right? With all the games being on New Year's Eve and now all the games being on New Year's Day or Christmas Eve, the games were on, and then now New Year's Day, all the games are on, right? I feel like it hasn't really happened before, or at least that I can remember. I'm sure it's happened before, but... Yeah, no, I I think you're right. I I was trying to think back, actually, the exact same thing, and I can't remember a time that it was everything's, like, on the same day. Right, like, Christmas Eve was weird because it was like you're running around, you're trying to figure out the last-minute shit that you got to get done, and at the same time, you're like, I don't want to do any of this because I just would rather sit down and watch NFL football. Not that the games were great, but, I mean, still, it was like games all day. Yeah, well, I, they haven't had a Christmas Day game in 25 years or something like that. Is that what they were saying? You know, I, I tuned out of podcasts this past like week, maybe the past two weeks. I really haven't been listening at the same clip that I had before. So, you know, I, uh, usually, you know, I don't have the time to do all that kind of research like I once did. Um, so I don't know all that stuff until I hear it. And then it's like, oh, yeah, you know, that, that is a pretty cool little tidbit. But is, it, is that the truth that it's been that long? Yeah, yeah. It's because that's they they had the longest game in NFL history was on a Christmas Day, and so then they refused to have games on Christmas Day forever. Oh well, well. I mean, it, did it, I mean they had what three games, and they were pretty 
crapo games. Um, you know that that uh, the Rams game was horrific. I mean, that game was awful. The but, middle game, yeah. The yeah. first game was good. First game was and good. The third. Third game was good. Yeah, it shouldn't have been, but it was. Um, and that one had me sweating because that was my teaser last week. And then I was like, I could go with Tampa Bay. I could go with San Francisco. What am I going to do here? And then I threw Tampa Bay in there. And then I'm sitting there and I said, oh, my God, I'm going to lose this teaser on, you know, Brady not being able to get it done here. And uh, then, you know, ultimately it ended up working out in my favor. But I was like, oh, thank God. <laughs> That's what I was looking for. Cash in, baby. But it was a, it was stressful. It was more stressful than it should have been. You know, so be it. So now tomorrow it will be New Year's Day, like we're talking about. We got a full slate of Week 17 games on the docket. Christmas is over in the rear view. You and the fam had a good time. Yeah, we all got... outside of tra- traveling on the holidays. It's it's yeah, you know, it's fun. Note to anybody coming into the New York City area if you're not familiar with the area. If you're in New Jersey or like that, it, JFK is not the airport to fly into. It's just not because it is a long drive, uh, especially if you hit it right at rush hour. So uh, kudos and, and a thank you to my brother for booking his flights at uh, a landing time of 5 o'clock on uh, two days before Christmas uh, out to no, JFK. No, no, three days no. Before, three days before Christmas? Uh, first off, it was Thursday, and secondly, uh, our flight was supposed to land at like three thirty-six. Yes, well, it got massive, de- massive delays, as everybody is well aware. Uh, of and all the eight- and <laughs> oh, here we go. And, and and it is not it is not our fault that someone decided to drive to JFK two days in a row. Well, I. Pumped the brakes to get myself some delicious Wendy's on the day before, and then was able to shoot a quick text to my brother saying, Hey, I might be about 15 minutes late. Here's my current ways time to JFK, which the response was, Well, why the fuck are you going to JFK? We're not flying in yep. till tomorrow. So, uh, luckily for me, I just got some delicious Wendy's, and then I repeated that the next day when I actually did drive to go pick them up. But uh, I, yeah. I, I saved myself. That Wendy's trip on Wednesday actually helped me. I mean, not calorically or for my heart. Uh, you know, a nice big cholesterol-filled salt, you know, meal. Uh, but it did help me in the sense that it saved me from going all the way to JFK on the day that I didn't have to. But the next day was even worse because it rained and it was crappy and there was tons of traffic. It wasn't your fault. You were supposed to fly in earlier. It's just that cold front that screwed up all of it airports across the nation did not help out with that that was a mess god i was sitting on this fucking on off ramp for it had to be 30 minutes and i just couldn't bring myself to do this smart intelligent asshole move of going to the one lane over to the left and then cutting everybody off by just shooting down that and then cutting off everybody to just get on the, the exit ramp which is what everybody was doing except for me because i don't know i don't have a set of nuts anymore that's what 20 years of marriage will do oh, 20 years no 15 I don't even know anymore. It just feels like one big marriage. That's what happens. You're not quite there yet, right? You guys are still in like the, oh, yeah, what year is it? It's, uh, you know, our fourth year of marriage. Five, yeah, we're five f- five years. Yeah, and then they just all blend into one, and it's just marriage. How long have you been married? I don't know. We've been married. That's what it is. You know what I'm talking about. Well, you don't, not yet. You will be. Anyway. Yeah, almost. Yeah. Yeah, well, another you got a while. Years. Well, well, you, you know, you you have another one kid, more kid, another yeah, kid on the way, kid. which is not announced. So, uh, I mean, at least via the social media outlets, but we are announcing it here. So, congratulations to Chris and Alyssa for having another Eggie in the wings, and just like clockwork, it's a boy because Eggies make boys. That's it. It's just all boys, uh, and then, then they'll make all boys, and then they'll make all boys, and exponentially there will be Eggies ruling the planet at one point or another. Probably not, but it's Ho- fun to think. Hopefully, <laughs> it's fun to think. Yeah, that'd be so be awesome. All right, um, enough bullshit. We'll get into this here. Got uh, about an hour, if not less. We'll see when uh, the youngster wakes up and CJ joins us to uh, tell us that it, we should be approaching the end. So we will jump into it here. Uh, I guess, 
you know, the best game on the docket, you want to just jump into it, it's the Monday night game. I mean, there's no other game that comes close to it, right? Well, the Vikings-Packers is the other game I have. All right, so that's the other game. So uh, we'll do the Monday night because that's a better game first. So we'll fly out to Buffalo where the Bills are going to be hosting the Bengals. This one is a gem. I mean, you're getting this in week 17, which is awesome. Um, you know, I, I guess it means a little bit for, you know, both teams. Obviously, the Bills are trying to keep that number one seed. The Bengals are trying to lock up their division. Um, you know, I, I don't know. Can they lock it up this week? I should have looked at the the stats again before I opened my big fat trap, but I didn't. Um, but obviously, uh, where are they standing right now? Do you know offhand? Not that you have the they, standings in front of you. Buffalo won the division. No, no, no. I, I know Buffalo. Well, Buffalo's fighting for the one seed with Kansas City. Right? Yes. So, yes. and then Cincinnati is going toe-to-toe with Baltimore for ownership of that division, correct? Uh, Again, I'm well, testing no, you on since, stuff. Since, the- Cincinnati will, if Cincinnati beats Buffalo, Cincinnati will be in first in the whole conference. They'll lock it up because they're 11 and 4 and, and Baltimore's won less no. at 10 and 5. They won't they won't lock up. Oh, lock up the division or the conference. Division, division. Now, th- I mean, for them to win on the conference, I guess Cincinnati would they Cincinnati would have to win the next two games and Kansas City and Buffalo would have to lose the next two. Obviously, Buffalo no. would be a loss no. for Cincinnati. Why not? No, no, no. They're they if they beat if they beat Buffalo, they'll be in first place in, in the conference. They will not because Kansas City would still be one game better if Kansas City wins. Kansas City and it Buffalo are both 12 Sorry. Three. Sorry, yes. Kansas City has to lose one. If Kansas City loses one of the next two and, and Cincinnati wins out, Cincinnati is the number one seed. Okay. So, like I said, a lot on the line here for the Cincinnati-Buffalo game. And so we'll get that on Monday night a good way. And Monday nights have not been great this year. This one is, like I said, a gem, a diamond, if you would. You know, a platinum-cut diamond. So Buffalo is going to be favored by one point here at home. Over under is 49.5 points. The Sharps and the money pool is in on Buffalo. And obviously this is a Monday night game, so this will change. All the spreads were pulled from DraftKings at around noon on December 31st. And all of the statistics are pulled from the Action Network app at the same time. So right now, like I was saying, money, 90% on Buffalo. So uh, that's crazy, but that'll obviously change because money comes in continually on the final games as the as the days and games go on. So right now, that's the lineup, and then uh, the tickets are on Bengals, 61%. So I don't know, tough game here, uh, and I don't... I, I have it written down that, that this game is in Cincinnati. You have this game in Cincinnati. Holy Jesus! You know, you, you do a podcast. Let me let me let me make sure that you are right and I'm wrong before I fucking lose my mind here. You know, it's tough to be to try to act professional when you line up all this stuff and then you screw up on where the game is. So this game is in Cincinnati. Uh, scratch that. Bills will be flying into Cincinnati for a home Bengals game. And the Bengals will be a home dog. And so just fucking scratch the entire entry there. So, like I was saying, of course, Buffalo in Cincinnati for this game. Buffalo favored by one. Uh, 49 and a half is the over-under. And I don't even know if anybody's listening at any point because I just fucked that one up. And that was the first big game, which I should know about because it's a podcast. Uh, Anyway. So what do you think here? Bills going into Cincinnati. Uh, you know, it's going to be a good game. It's kind of a coin flip. I definitely think Buffalo's got the lean. Yeah, I think Buffalo has the lean. I, they, uh, KC should have beat them when they played them in Cincinnati, and I remember betting on Kansas City. They blew that game in the in the last quarter and a half, quarter of that game. So, I, and I think Buffalo's, honestly, I think Buffalo's better than Kansas City. So I, I just think that it's uh, regardless of what time of year it is, playing on national television is is Buffalo is very used to it. Cincinnati is while they were in the Super Bowl last year, I, I don't think like this is going to be a game that that's affected by national television is what I'm trying to say. 
So if you throw that out the window, because people always mention, oh, well, this game's on national television and blah, blah, blah is not good on national television. Like, fuck that. I don't, I don't give a shit that it's on national television. You have two very, very good teams. I know that Cincinnati's rush defense is pretty good. I'm hesitant to say that their pass defense is any good. If Josh Allen is healthy, and to all appearances he is, I just think this is a, 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 a cakewalk for them. I don't, I don't think that this is anything other than just another game. A cakewalk, though. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't think Cincinnati is. Cincinnati is good. I don't think they're as good as people are giving them credit for. Well, to that end, I do agree. I'm a little surprised that this isn't like Bills minus two or Bills minus two and a half. I did think that Buffalo going into this game was going to be a little bit more of a favorite. Um, and I definitely thought that when I had it written down that they were home. But again, regardless, take the home and away out of the picture. Uh, if but, Yeah, if they were home, it'd be three and a hook or something. Yeah, you know, but the point is, is that regardless, the month, like you said, the primetime game to me isn't really a factor. Home field to me really isn't a factor. This comes down to who's the better team, and I think the answer is really clearly Buffalo. Not to mention that the Bengals are rather banged up on defense, right? They've, they've got, battled a bunch of injuries here in the past couple of weeks. Um, I, I don't know. I think it's just going to be tough for Cincinnati to get the win here against a Buffalo team that you know hasn't been lights out, but they're still one of the top five teams in the league, if not you know higher than that. And I, Cincinnati's been making a nice run. Burrow is a phenomenal quarterback. I just think the Bills have more of a pe- more pieces in place, and one point just isn't enough for me. I, I'm I'm really big on, on Buffalo here this week. They're actually my best bet, and I'm going to take them here against the Bengals with the one point. Yeah, me too. I I don't. I didn't even second question this game. I know it's the biggest game of the week, but I'm. I don't really care. It's I, I hope it's a good game. I love watching, you know, games that come down to fantasy championships will all be determined on a Monday night football this year, like the last game of the year, which is kind of cool. Yeah. But well, I was going to say, I, this, I just, this game to me is like really reminiscent of that Minnesota game, right? Like how do the Bengals win? It would be the same way that Minnesota wins, right? Like they just stay alive – you know, Burrow plays really well, makes big plays, and then I, something screwy happens down the end where, I, you know, Josh Allen throws a, a key pick or some shit like that. And if you think that's going to happen, then yeah, sure. You know, maybe maybe Cincinnati is your play. But otherwise, all things being equal, if these two teams were to play out in a, you know, a non-crazy event game, I, I just, I think that Buffalo wins this game seven times out of ten. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. It's it's my one knock on on NFL as a whole is I wish that teams got to the Super Bowl and they played like a three week um best of three. Like a three Yeah, it would be kinda cool. I, I just it would I know that I know that the it was it's never been that way, so it will never be that way. I just always thought that it would be kinda cool if you know the best two teams in either conference uh, got a chance to to really adjust after one game and see if they could uh, make some changes. But it, it's just so much hinges on these one games every year that it's like no matter you have a week of preparation, that's great. But you know most other sports you have numerous weeks of preparation, right? And then you have numerous ways to adjust. And and rest and yeah, I don't know. Just well, a stu- well, just bu- a stupid thought. Nah, it's not at all. Like the Buffalo, <laughs> the Buffalo Bills of the '90s would have loved your idea, because God, they go to the Super Bowl four times in a row, and you know, a couple of those games they just end up, you know, just shit in the bed. But other games that are competitive and just didn't work out. I mean, that God, that first game versus the the Giants between Thurman Thomas losing his helmet, and then I, you know, losing on, on a missed field goal. I mean, they would love to play the Giants two more times. Because I, you know, the Giants probably wouldn't be able to do that again twice. But you know, the single game nature of it, you know, here we are, and so you know, you got to figure out here Bengals Bills how the Bengals could pull it off, and uh, I, you know, I don't really know 
uh, how they could. And if it was a best of series, Buffalo would definitely win. So that lands us firmly in the Buffalo camp for the first game, which was the Monday nighter. Uh, the second game, like you were talking about, is going to be played down or over in Minnesota with the Vikings hosting Green Bay. Green Bay is going to be the road favorite here, if you can believe My that. dude. My dude. My dude. Oh, you have it this wrong. is in Green Bay. This yeah. is in Green Bay. I have it written down at Green Bay, and I was thinking... I was thinking of something else. Holy shit. I am not stopping the podcast, but uh, I am just going to basically just, uh, you know, take a mulligan on this entire podcast. So anyway, like I said, I have it written down here at Packers, Vikings, Packers three-point favorite. Vikings are, what, 12-3, and and they're going to be the three-point dog. Uh, The over-under here in this game is 47.5. So the first two games are both north of 45 points, but south of 50. There's actually only one 50-point game, and that's going to be the Lions-Bears, which we'll get to later. So anyway, Packers here, they've got nothing on their side. Everybody and their brother is picking the Vikings. 63% of the tickets and 69% of the money pool is on Minnesota. So, you know, Green Bay... Uh, I don't know, a streaky team right now. Minnesota, everybody hates. I mean, the betters hate this damn team. Uh, They only play close games. But here you go. You got a close game here. Packers by three. What do you do here with Minnesota, who, you know, everybody just wants to write off. And, you know, they're going to be a first game playoff outed Viking team. And here they're going to go up against the, you know, Packer team that's going to be playing hard because they need the game. I wrote down Minnesota, and I think that Minnesota is probably going to win, but I uh, I just don't know until Sunday when they decide who's in and out because I think that if Christian Watson plays, that makes the Packers a lot better of a team. Uh, they haven't had oh, infinitely, their full... infinitely, he's better with them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he, they haven't had their full allotment... I think what the guy said on the radio last week was that they have only played 10% of their snaps with all of their starters healthy. So if that's true and if Watson is back for this game, I mean that's a that's a dramatic difference because he he is such a he's he just is he's a game wrecker. Yeah. You know he can take the ball and go 70 yards and before you know it they you know they score. It's funny how things have changed over the season, right? Because if we I mean, you know, it's week 17 which is nuts, but you go all the way back to preseason and everybody and their brothers talking about Romeo Dubs, right? And nobody's talking about Watson anymore. It's like they they threw him out and it was like, "No, Dubs is the guy. You got to you got to watch this guy Dubs." And then, uh, you know, a, a lot of uh, fantasy football podcast talking about dubs, 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 and then Watson just sat out there and like nobody touched him, and now it turns out like he's the guy, like, and that's why they dropped. Well, he was he was hurt, he was hurt forever. Well, he was hurt forever, but people were talking about dubs nonstop, like nobody even sniffed Watson after a while, like it was it yeah. was not talked about, and he just kind of sat out there, and then all of a sudden he ended up becoming kind of like a, a mid season pickup for a lot of fantasy teams. Which then it gets frustrating because you lose him, and now you don't even know you're going to have him. Anybody that had Watson, that kind of, you know, he wasn't like a a Monron St. Brown from last year, but he did impact a lot of teams positively in the fantasy world. And now it's like the finals, and if you got him and he got you there or helped you get there, you might not even have him, you know, in the finale. Yeah, I got him in. I'm in one of my. One of the three finals that I'm in, he's he was on. He was like my savior down the stretch and now I, I don't have him yeah which is unfortunate but and it's been a kind of a funky finals week with a, you know a, a lot of things you know Tony Pollard I had him I was in a fi- I'm in finals this week and then Pollard ends up going out and then I mean he was like the, my one saving grace at running back and uh, now I don't have him so now I'm kind of sitting there grasping at straws as what I can throw in there and nothing was really equivalent to Pollard's production over the second half of the year. And there, there are, you know, other instances everywhere. Fantasy people know exactly what we're talking about because you're sitting there just being like, ugh, I gotta go to my final and I don't have him. You know, whoever. Yeah, DeAndre, 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 DeAndre Hopkins just oh, got laid yeah, down. Oh, yeah, Hopkins, late scratch. 
he will not be partaking in the game, uh, the Arizona Falcons game. So that's another that's a that's a shitty go for for people. So and then you you know hurts owners that thinking they might come back. They're not quite sure. It doesn't sound like he's going to go, but. You know, they're keeping hopes alive with all the comments this week. Yeah, he got to practice in. He looked okay. He might go. He might not. Who the hell knows? He's not going to go. Um, I, I, I wouldn't think so because I think they were happy with, you know, Minshew's performance last week. So why not take another swing with Minshew, see if you can get the win. You're playing against the Saints. Well, we'll get to that game in a little bit. So rewind back here to the Vikings. You're taking the Vikings. Uh, I'm going to take the Vikings as well. Uh, I, You know, I don't know. I just, I got to give the Vikings a chance here. I, you know, three points. This isn't like four points. This isn't four and a half. Um, I, I know that, you know, Packers, I seem, would imagine is the trendy pick. I thought for sure they'd own the tickets. They don't. Minnesota has both the tickets and the money pool. Uh, Sharps don't have a lean, but you know I don't know. I, I I've been watching the Packers. They they've gotten stuff done, but it hasn't been really convincing. Nor the Vikings, but the Vikings have a, a a real big fight in them. I mean, they really they should be winning these games. They they have to fight to do it. They should be winning them handily. They have to fight to get it done. But ultimately, they do get it done. So I'm gonna give them the benefit of the doubt here. I'm gonna take the Vikings here in Green Bay. As are you. Yeah, I mean, I'm t- I'm, yeah, as am I, yeah. All right, so those are the two big ones. We'll go down the rest of the slate now. And we'll start off with, uh, let's just go to the Eagles-Saints game. It's not in the order that uh, was on Action Network, which is usually how we do the order, but uh, we were just talking about it. So like I said, Eagles hosting the Saints here. I got that one right. Congratulations, Rich. Eagles, five-and-a-half point favorites here. 41-and-a-half is the over-under the tickets are on the Eagles. The Sharps and the money are on the Saints. Big time in terms of money as 88% of the prize pool is there with New Orleans. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm Even with Minshew in there, I think the Eagles win it. And then the question is by how much? Five and a half is a lot of points. And I, I you know, the Saints, they, they jobbed me last week. I thought that... Uh, Cleveland's going to win. They didn't. New Orleans pulled that game off, which a lot of betters really liked New Orleans last week, and they were right. Uh, you know, I, I hear the same thing this week with the Saints. Do you have any faith in the Saints getting getting closer than five and a half here? I don't know. I I I, I know everyone's talking about how good, how secretly good their defense has been over the past. I don't know, eight weeks or something like that, but. That I, what's their record over the past eight weeks? Like they still suck. I don't care how good your fucking defense is. Well, Philly's just a better team. I, I mean, it's like not even close either, right? No, I mean I'm I'm benching most of my Eagles because I I don't this game. What if this game gets out of hand in the first half? You know. I'm, well, who are you going to bench? I mean, is it going to get out of hand? I, I mean. You know, it'll probably be a good go for at least a game. I mean, you know, five well, and a half. I like on like, bench. They if they're winning by benching, ten, are they going to bench, bench people? I'm benching Sanders. I'm benching Goddard. Uh, Sanders has been cold. I just, I, I, I just don't trust that he's really that good. Um, I think. AJ Brown is probably going to have a pretty good game. I, I just don't trust. I just don't trust this offense, regardless of who's quarterback right now. Yeah, I, I, I. Not to mention that they, their run stuffer Jordan Davis is is out again. Yeah, and came back he, and then is out again. And they lost offensive linemen again, like the. They're going in the wrong direction, injury-wise. Well, all they do is they need to win. And when you think about it here, I don't know. They could go the route that you're talking about, and they just set everybody, and they're just hoping for something to go their way. Or they, you know, pump it really hard here at home against a shaky Saints team, and then they lock up the win, and then next week they can just basically take the week off. I mean, they just need one win. They, they, I mean, they could get it another way, too. The Cowboys lost, but, um, you know, I, that'll have to wait for next week. So, 
I don't know. I, I think that they do enough to get it done here and, and cover the five and a half and then look to take next week off. Uh, as for your question about the Saints, uh, over their past five games, they're three and two. But, uh, you know, the wins were the Rams, the Falcons, and the Browns, and the losses were San Francisco and Tampa Bay. So, you're, you know, they, they beat uh, they beat up bad teams, and then they lose to, I don't know, uh, Tampa Bay, a good team, uh, good or mediocre teams. Tampa has more talent than 90% of the league. They just, they're not putting it together. Yeah, they haven't put it together. And if you want to go even back, backwards more than that, the Saints basically, uh, I don't know what week it was, but they lost to Baltimore, they lost to the Steelers, then they won versus the Rams, they lost to both the Niners and the Bucks, and then they beat Atlanta and Cleveland. So, I mean, it just doesn't give you a lot of those wins, and that performance doesn't give you a lot of confidence, at least me, uh, and sounds like you, of them going in here and keeping it a close game. Five and a half, the Eggie brothers on the Eagles. So, the... New York Giants, a fellow NFC East team here, are going to be playing host to the Colts. Oh, I got it right again. And the Giants are going to be six-point favorites against Indianapolis. The tickets and the money are both on the Giants. No, not a ton, just a, enough. No sharp action. 39 is the over-under. Uh, what do you do here with Colts, Giants, and a big spread of six, which is kind of unheard of. But then again, we're talking yeah. about Indianapolis. Everybody thinks the Giants are a lock. I, I mean, I think they're a lock to win. The six, I, I, I didn't know what to do. It was a coin flip for me. I think they're going to cover. I, I don't have any faith in I, I, Nick Foles, man. I, I don't know. They, they looked really, really. Their defense is fine. Their defense knows how to play. Their offense is just horrific. Yeah, I, I'm with the Giants, too. I just I don't like the six points. It's way too much. For me, but here I'm. With, I'm the same with you. I, I just picked the Giants because I got no faith in that that Colts team. You know, Indianapolis really fucked themselves over when they decided to fire Reich and go with Saturday. I, I just, I, I will still one of the weirdest coaching decisions I've ever seen in my life. And I'm 46, and uh, you know, I'm, there there are people that I've seen a lot more than I have. But goddamn, I, I, I don't just don't understand I don't that think at all. He, I don't think he did it. For any reason other than to tank, he wanted to tank. I, I don't know what the reason want, was, but it doesn't make any logical sense. You fire a coach that people wants, loved, like people liked him, and yeah, he wasn't perform. They weren't performing great, but I mean, you know, you went from Wentz to you know Ryan. I mean, two ancient quarterbacks, or not ancient, one ancient, the other one completely banged up and. You're just thrown out of Philadelphia because nobody had had any kind of faith in him. And then, you know, I mean, well, he actually, uh, where did Wentz go? He, he, he left Wash, uh, He left Philadelphia, and where did he go? Or, no, he went straight to Indianapolis, right? There was no in-between? He, he got traded to Indy, then he wound up in Washington. And then he ended up, went in Washington. So that was the jump. So, you know, you got Wentz one year, you got Ryan the next year. You know, is that fireable, like, the performance that they were having? I just... Well, and for I, Jeff look, there's Saturday, two, holy shit! We're no, dude, but we're not. We're in no way uh, tied to the NFL uh, uh, inner, you know, inner uh, no, whatever they call. We're it. We're two like brothers. One that lives in one that lives in New Jersey. One that lives in in Fort Lauderdale. Or, well, not Fort Lauderdale, but Boynton Beach. I, you know. Neither of us are in the NFL circles. We're not. <laughs> we don't have any inside information. So you're right. We don't know anything. But I don't think you need to know that much insider anything to think that this was just Dude, an insane coaching move. He fuck. He's tanking. What? There's two reasons. One, he's tanking. Two, there's going to be no debate at the end of the year as to should this guy still be the next coach. No, he's obviously not going to be the next coach. So now they can start looking for a real coach, and that's it. Who wants to have a, a, a what is what are they, third overall? Third? Uh, oh, I don't know the, the ultimate draft standings as of right now. Uh, if we go to NFL and go to standings, tell you in, in a hot second here, and you just do league, uh, division, league, and at the bottom is... Uh, Texans, Bears, Cardinals, Broncos, Colts. Um, 
fifth, but didn't didn't they trade one of their picks away? No. For, for who? Uh, no, I don't know. So didn't. let's say they're no, they didn't. Current NFL draft order for 2023. I actually was looking at this the other day because people are starting to do this now. Um, updated draft order after week week 16. And, you know, Philadelphia, you know, hats off because they're up there now in, like, the top ten with another pick. Um, and so it goes uh, Texans, Bears, Seahawks, and the Seahawks pick is from the Broncos. <laughs> like, unbelievable. The Broncos would just have loved that pick, and now they have Russell Wilson and no pick. Cardinals, and then you go the Colts, and then Falcons, and then the Lions uh, via the Rams, Panthers. They can't Raiders, get out of his – they can't Eagles. get out of the Wilson contract until 2025. Yeah, that, that's that's probably been one of the more frequent podcast talking points uh, over the past week or two that I've been listening to is just everybody talking about Wilson and how bad it's gone and trying to figure out how they can get out of it. But back to the topic at hand, you're right. The Colts are right there at four. One, two, three, four, five. So five. Colts are at five. They're five. And they're, they have to hope that, that Denver – or Arizona can squeak out a win because then they'll be top three. Yeah, well, you would imagine that Denver, you know, I, I mean, again, this is all off topic and, and probably a podcast for later, but, I, you know, Texans are probably going to keep that number one spot, and if they don't, they'll the Bears will be in there. I don't know how much more. If you're, if you're the Colts, you're hoping to lose out here next two games, and maybe the Cardinals beat the Falcons. Uh, the Broncos are definitely going to lose to Kansas City here. So, you know, Seattle, yeah, Seattle's no, sitting pretty. That... Because, you know, the Bears could win versus the Lions this week. The Texans, I don't really think they're going to beat the Jags, but they could, you know, they're, they're alive. So, no, they could. They could. You know, Seattle could end up looking, you know, fantastic here because they could just slide all up, all the way up, you know, to two or one. And then all of a sudden, it's like, you know, what do you do with Geno Smith? Do you go after a quarterback or whatnot? Anyway. Houston's going to have two top ten picks. Yeah. Philly is – Philly's just – they because of C.J. C. J. Gardner-Johnson, they – not C.J. Gardner-Johnson. Um, uh, who is that? They uh, – What do you – Andrews P? Who is the, the fucking guy they took? Olave was one of them. Who are you talking about? At, the Saints. The Saints took Olave. Olave and... was uh, wasn't there the, that their number one pick? That was had, their first pick. It was had, Olave, right? It might have been Olave. The second pick was the tackle, the uh, offensive tackle. Yeah, I know. I don't know his name. Um, I'll pull it up here in a second. Um, ba, 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 ba. I thought Olave went is their first one. Olave went eleven, and the Saints. Where was the Saints' second pick? Penning it's like 16. was 19. Yeah, it was 19. Yeah, so Olave was first. Yeah. And Penning was, yes. was 19th. Oh, that's right. And, and Penning went right after Traylon Burks. Right. So Tennessee right. made that trade. They got rid of, uh, you know, they got rid of A.J. Brown. They picked up Burks. And then Penning went immediately thereafter. So, and then, and that yeah. was funny. That was a nice little, because there was a lot of action in the draft at that point because you had the Burks pick after the Get trade. Burks. Saints. Picked uh, the Penning, and then Pickett went immediately after Penning. So that was Pittsburgh got their quarterback. So anyway, we uh, completely digress. And back to the topic at hand here. Uh, we've got the Giants, Colts, Giants by six. You're going to take the Giants? Yeah. I'm going to take the Giants as well. And then that will bring us to Kansas City where the Chiefs are going to be hosting the Broncos, as we just talked about, uh, Mr. Russell Wilson and everything that's just been a disaster in Denver this year. Coach gone, and now the Chiefs are going to be 12.5-point favorites against the Broncos. 45 is the over-under. Under. Big money on the Broncos, 85% of the prize pool, but the Sharps and the tickets like the Chiefs. 12.5 is a lot of points. I ultimately think I am going to go with the points in this case. Uh, with the points, which way? With the Broncos, I mean, you know, I, I think the, oh. I think the points are just too much. I, Twelve and a half is a lot of points. And Chiefs I never get this they, done. I know, but I, I think if they're going to, I think if the Broncos cover, it'll be more of a backdoor cover than it will. They're going to stay in this game. They're, they were losing twenty-eight nothing to them 
three weeks ago. Yeah, I, know. I, I mean, look, the, the Chiefs have the blowout factor pretty much every week. Uh, they rarely do, but, you know, it, it's not like the team three years ago, right? They were just throwing up tons of points. But they are infinitely a better team. The Broncos still have an okay defense. And can Russell Wilson at least keep them in it? 12, 12 and a half points. It's just a lot of, it's a lot of points, especially for this defense. The defense is good. The Denver's defense? It's not, it's not bad, dude. It really isn't. I mean, you know, their, their team is not great, but the defense is okay. Mm. Let's see. What are you doing? Are you looking up? What you? Because I thought I thought the same thing for a long time. They gave up fifty-one, fifteen, thirty-four, fifty-one to the Rams, fifteen to the Cardinals, thirty-four to the Chiefs, ten to the Ravens, twenty-three to the Panthers. 22 to the Raiders. Like, dude, that's just the past five games. Like, they're not good. They're I, not good. I mean, I, I could throw, I mean, I could throw DVOA at you and say that they're seventh. You oh, know, I don't care. They're fourth, they're but, fourth past DVOA and they're 22nd against the rush. So, maybe because that includes the first 10 weeks of the season when they still cared. All right, so you're going to go to the Chiefs here in the 12, 12 and a half? Yeah. Okay, so you're going to uh, we're not going to spend that much more time talking about the Chiefs. Kind of got yeah, I don't ramp care it up here anyway game. because yeah. I don't want CJ to wake up and then just come screaming in and uh, and tear you away. So, uh we're on opposite sides on that one. So the next game will be in Houston Jaguars Texans. Texans a home dog here by 3 points. Jaguars have tickets on their side, but barely, just at 52%. And then the Sharps and the money, like Houston, 80% of the prize pool is on the Texans. 43 is the over-under. Uh, what are you going to do here? Are you going to do the, the the Jags, which is everybody's kind of like darling love child right now? Or are you going to take Houston here, who's played hard, even though they keep losing? Yeah, I, I know everyone, I know that Jacksonville's sitting players and everything. I, I just don't think... Uh, what's his name? Peterson wants to lose this game. Uh, you know, I think they want to go into next week with with riding kind of a high. Well, so I think you know, that, nothing about this game matters to Jacksonville. You know, nor did it matter no. to Tennessee on Thursday night. So right, and Tennessee fought really hard. Yeah, they played really so, hard. I, I I'm gonna go with Jacksonville. Okay, I'm on the other side of this one. I'm taking Houston, and it has nothing to do with the sitting players or anything. I just, I think the Texans have really kind of fucking fought, you know, a valiant effort here down the stretch. Uh, I'm not a Lovey fan, Lovey Smith fan, but, you know, the team has been playing hard for them, and they got to get a win somewhere. I mean, for the, the effort that they've been putting in and the fight that they've had here, I, you know, I, they got to get a win somewhere, and I'm going to give them this one. So I'm going to take Houston. You are going to take Jacksonville. That's going to bring us to Tampa Bay, where the Bucks are going to be hosting the Panthers. This game, you know, another good game. So they've got to – we talked about Bills-Bengals earlier. Um, I don't know. And then we talked about the Packers-Vikings good game. you got a good game here in the Bucks and the Panthers. Bucks favored by four. Over-under is 40 points. Tickets and the money both like the Panthers. Money more so, 73% of the money pool. And then the Sharps have no lean. So are you going to go with Brady here that he can get this done down the stretch, starting here with the Panthers? Yes. Not not a doubt in my mind. Yeah, I'm with, I'm with you there. I, my pick is Tampa Bay as well. You know, four, point, four points is, I mean, you watch Tampa Bay play, and they're, like, lucky to win any of these games. Um, but here, they should be able to get this done. And the defense is good enough, right? Like, we're talking about Sam Darnold. You know, he's got to implode at some point. I don't even know why we even say his name. Like, Sam Darnold is, should never be a conversation piece in any podcast. I, like he, he, he's playing he, and they're winning, you know? I mean, they're, they're, well, they're not winning. They're I, alive. They're alive. He's, he's not the reason. They, they ran for... No, it's all running in two, defense. 200... What was the stat last week? Two, 220, 230 yards in the first half? Well, 
to that end, what what's funny? Remember when we were talking? I I forget what podcast if it was preseason talking about um, running backs or if it was intra-season. Like Deontay Foreman, or maybe this was a bar conversation and we didn't even talk talk about it on the podcast, but Deontay Foreman, right? Like this guy, he has gotten himself hurt so many times in the past, it was hard to believe he was still even in the NFL, right? And yet teams kept giving him a shake every year, every there. You know, he, what, Tennessee last year, right, before he came to – Carolina this year, if I'm not mistaken. And it was like, well, obviously these guys see something in them, right? Because like a running back that gets banged up that much, eventually you're just like, fuck it, dude, you're done. Right? Like you just don't, like Le'Veon Bell, you know? I mean, Le'Veon Bell just fell off a cliff. That guy went from being like top in the in the league, took one year off, and was never the same again. Foreman's gotten injured, 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 but they kept giving him a shot, and here he is. He's, you know, he's tearing it up. He's playing really well. Yeah, he's okay. I mean, <laughs> all that for fun. Oh, nothing and like him. Okay, all right. You so. were, you were, you really like him. I get it. Like, I no, I just think still, it's a good uh, story. That's all. I just think it's a good story that you know the guy was basically throwing a scrap heap, but they kept him alive, and now he's performing really well. So, um, you know, here in the regular season, they are four, three and one over their last four wins versus Denver, Seattle, and Detroit. A loss versus Pittsburgh, and now they got to go into Tampa Bay here and see you, if they can. Do get you know who was? Done. Do you know who was really good at one point? Uh, I mean, really? I, you, you're going to ask me? Do I know who's really good at one point? I, I really mean, good? Out, out like, of the entire really, population really of NFL fucking players that have. Yeah, like really. How am I supposed really to even? Good. How am I supposed to even uh, take a stab at that? Really good, like really good. Oh, uh, I don't know. Kurt Warner was really good at one point. You know? No, 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 no. No. You want to take another guess? No. Uh, who, who was really good at? Uh, Obviously, you would never. Christian Okoye was really Warner. good at one point. Uh, but, Christian Okoye no, was you really would good never at one put, point. Okay. okay. Who were we just talking about? Uh, Isaac Bruce was really good at one point. <laughs> Are we talking about Deontay Foreman? Right. So, so you would Deontay Foreman has never been good, and and he's now good. So, you know who good. else was really good? Oh, Foreman, well, uh, okay, who? Peyton Hillis. <laughs> yeah, right. I know <laughs> what. Okay, so you're just saying a running back. That's where I was going, dude. Uh, sure, Peyton Hillis. Yes, he was really good. He was juiced up on roids, and uh, he was phenomenal for that one year. And then he broke down uh, everywhere after. Mm-hmm. He made the Madden cover. He made the Madden cover, which was crazy because everybody was like, "Yeah, he's steroid." Well, whatever, so be it. Um, all right, I, I, enough about that. So we're both on the Buccaneers for that one. Uh, Lions, Bears in Detroit. Lions six point favorites here. Bears are a trifecta, a ton of money, 91% of the money pool on the Bears. And 52 and a half is the largest over-under of the week, and it is in this game. So what do you think? Offensive shootout here, no defense. Bears or Lions? Tigers, oh my. <laughs> oh, fucking uh, I took the Bears. Uh, I took the Bears as well. So we're both in on Chicago. Next game is going to be in New England. This game, obviously, of significance because the Dolphins franchise quarterback is now on career, uh, you know, on, on a career, I don't know, cliff, I guess, uh, for lack of other terminology, as Tua is diagnosed with his third concussion of the year. They say it's a second concussion, but that's only because they still refuse to say that he was concussed with that back injury uh, in the first week or whatever, second week, third week, whenever his first concussion, which was a concussion, not a back injury, then that led to his seizure on the field, and now he's got a third one. So anyway, he's out, Bridgewater in. New England is the three-point favorite over under here is 41. Sharps like the Patriots. Tickets are basically split. Money more so on the Dolphins. I don't know what to do with this game. I I, I picked the Patriots I, I just the because. Pass. Yeah, I took the Pats too. I'm just thinking, uh, you know, Teddy Bridgewater coming in cold off the bench, going into New England. The weather shouldn't be that much of a factor, but I don't know. I I think 
I, I wouldn't be surprised if the Dolphins won, but I'm going to give Belichick and the Patriots a benefit of the doubt here. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to take the Patriots too. I, I just don't know where this how this game is going to play out, but I have more faith in Belichick at home than I do anything else. Yeah, Belichick at home versus Bridgewater on the road off the bench. So we're both in on New England there. Commander's going to be hosting the Browns in the next game. Two and a half points in favor of Washington. Trifecta game as well, all in favor of the Commanders. Heavy on the money, 80% of the money pool in on Washington. 41 is the over-under. I took Washington. For what reason? Uh, Cleveland is just kind of let me down here in the past couple of weeks. It really hasn't come together. They lose the, to New Orleans last week. Now they've got to go on the road, and you know the Commanders are, are switching quarterbacks. I like the Commanders' talent a little bit more, especially on defense. Uh, the Browns this year just never kind of put it together, and I know that Stefanski isn't under you know the microscope, and he doesn't he's not on the hot seat. But you know the Browns have really not played well this year. You know the six and nine. Um, granted, they had to deal with the whole quarterback thing, but you know Watson's come back and they haven't been great. You know they had a win versus Tampa Bay, and then they beat the Texans, which everybody does. They lose to Cincinnati, they beat Baltimore thirteen to three, and then they lose to New Orleans seventeen to ten. You know, so I I don't know that New Orleans loss kind of shook me. Now they got to go on the road, so I'm going to give it to the Commanders. Okay, yeah, I mean I, I don't really care too much about either one of these teams, but I just think that Cleveland can control the clock a little more than Washington can handle, and I don't think that they're really going to have an answer for Chubb. I just think Chubb's going to go off in this game. Okay, I mean, Chubb has not gone off in forever, but uh, that would be great for me as he is one of my fantasy running backs in the finale uh, tomorrow against Bacala. So, yeah, I'll, I'll take that. So if I'm wrong here, it'll benefit me. Uh, next game is going to be in Atlanta. Falcons versus the Cardinals. Falcons three-point favorites uh, versus Arizona. Uh, now, the Cardinals just lost DeAndre Hopkins. That was just announced a couple hours ago here on the 31st. Uh, Falcons have the Sharps on their side, but then the money and the tickets are on the Cardinals' side. Not a lot, though. And the money's bare, money's almost split 50-50. It's 51%. So nothing really showing there. 41.5 is the over-under. What do you do here with Arizona versus the Falcons? This game sucks, too. I yeah, took Arizona. I, I, I mean, I took Arizona, but I don't really care. I'm not going to bet it. Yeah, I took Arizona as well, and we'll just get off that game. Who the fuck cares? 49ers hosting, or 49ers on the road versus your Raiders. Raiders obviously going through a quarterback change this week. 49ers are going to be 9.5 point favorite against Las Vegas. 42.5 is the over-under. Both the tickets and the money like the 49ers and a decent amount, eight, over 80% in both those categories. Sharps are going to come in here on the Raiders. Uh, are you going to come in on the Raiders too in the 9.5 points thinking it's too much? No, no. Right. No, I'm going to take the 49ers. I'm not going to get the. I'm, I have zero interest in the in the Raiders. They suck. Yeah, uh, they're really bad. Yeah, they're really bad. You've been bet on them all year, as you should, as should all Raider fans. I'm going to end up taking the Raiders though in the nine and a half points. I just think it's it's too much. Nine and a half is too much for the you know Raider team at home, who you know they they just bench Carr. That's the end of the Carr era there in Las Vegas. You know Stidham isn't the answer, but I don't know. Maybe you get a, a different quarterback surge here and uh, maybe some better performance out of some people. Obviously, you know, Josh uh, Josh Jacobs was seemed pretty enthusiastic in the quotes that I read that they were changing quarterbacks. So, Devontae Adams upset, Josh Jacobs happy, you know, who the fuck knows. Anyway, enough of that. We're on opposite sides of the 49ers Raiders game. Jets Seahawks this one in Seattle. Jets going to be a road favorite, kind of a weird uh you know, spread there, but Jets do have a really good defense, and the Seahawks are more or less tanking right now. Jets are favored by two. 42 and a half is the over-under. Trifecta game, everybody favoring the Jets, most being the money at 64%. What are you going to do? Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, after last week, I don't think I'll ever bet the Jets again. Well, Mike White coming back. So, you know, that Thursday night game, I was all over uh, – 
the Jags last Thursday. I, I hit that in a couple of ways. What that was solid. So I kind of saw that coming. I the Jets just that was not their spot. But here I don't know. Um, I don't know if I want to take them or not. You know, like the Seahawks have just been bad. Yeah, I mean they're seven yeah, and eight, but they just haven't looked good. You know, over the over the end stretch here. I mean they lost three in a row. Mm, yeah, I don't know. I. I mean, the Seahawks have won one of their past six. A game versus the Rams, right? Otherwise, all losses. Tampa Bay, Vegas, Carolina, San Francisco, Kansas City. All L's. Yeah, I don't I don't know. I just I the Jets defense is good and all, but I just don't. All right. Know. I'm taking the Jets, you're taking the Seahawks. Yeah. That'll bring us to the battle for Los Angeles. With the Chargers claiming the home turf, even though they can't claim the home stadium because they share them both, but they'll change the turf. So that's why I'm saying they're going to change. They're going to claim the turf anyway. That really wasn't funny or enlightening in any way, shape, or form. Chargers six and a half point favorites. Forty two is the over under. Ninety nine percent of the money likes the Rams right now. Sixty percent of the tickets are in on the Chargers. You know, I don't know what to do with this game. Uh, you know, six and a half is a lot of points. But the Rams are on fumes. I don't know. What are you going to do here? Chargers. Chargers all day. Chargers all day. They Six should... and a half doesn't doesn't phase you. No, they. Uh, the Chargers just got into the playoffs. They can, if they win out, they can avoid having to play Kansas City in the first round. They're going to play. They're going to. They're going to play hard. Yeah, I, I mean, I guess I'll go with you. I'm, you know, I'm on the fence. I mean, six and a half is a lot of points, but the Rams really their, their season has imploded here. The Chargers are on the uptick. They're getting Joe. I think Bose is playing tomorrow, right? They they he's back from injury, and I think he's playing tomorrow. So yes. the defense is is on the uptick. So I'll I'll go with you there on the Chargers Rams, and then that leaves us to the final game for us to talk about, and that is the Sunday night football fe feast, which is the rave feast that uh, who does the uh, fantasy feast. Uh, that fucking guy who does 8 million podcasts. Anyway, fucking Ravens hosting the Steelers. Ravens favored by two and a half points. The money and the tickets are both in on Pittsburgh for this one. 72% of the tickets, 77% of the money. Over under is 35, not expecting any any points in this one. So, I don't know. This is going to be a good game. I, I was glad that they put this into Sunday Night Football. It might not be the best football, but I think it'll be a good game, and it means something. So, I'm all in on this one, although I don't know which way to go. Pittsburgh, definitely. I mean, Pittsburgh has been the hotter team. Uh, the Ravens at home, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna bet on. At two and a half, Tyler all I gotta Hundley. do is win. All I gotta do is win. Win, win, yeah, win. Gonna... All I gotta uh, they do just, is win. they just, they are, they are desperate to get Lamar Jackson back, and they're gonna uh, have to eventually. Th <laughs> Lamar doesn't want to play. Lamar is done with he, his team. He is definitely doesn't want to play. No, he does He's, not. He wants his contract, and until he gets it, I, I think he is just really kind of punching out. I mean, eventually maybe he plays, but, I mean, come on. You know, I'm not saying that he's not hurt, but, you know, he does not want to play for this team. He does not want to risk anything because now it's like, I, I want my money. They suck without him. Yeah, which is the conundrum that they're in. They suck without him, and yet he's not a quarterback worthy of paying all that cash. No, you can't. So what you do can't. you do? You way too injury prone. You move on. If if you're if you're the fucking Ravens, you just move on. Yeah, I wouldn't give him the money. You know, you could franchise him, but then then you're playing that crazy game where I, you know, he is going to piss and moan the entire time until he either gets his money or he gets traded. Uh, you know, from the Ravens, you know, you have a good investment in there. You know, I would probably play the game and I probably franchise them and, you know, let him get angry and see if you can flip him for picks or something. But, you know, it's a big commitment to give him all that money and then uh, try to build your entire offense, 
like they have in the years past around, you know, a quarterback who if he runs, he can get hurt, and that's the end of it, and then you're, like, going to Tyler Hundley in a game like this where you're going to take the Steelers. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna take I'm gonna take the Ravens. I'm gonna take the Ravens here. I'm just gonna give it to the home team, even though Steelers are playing probably better football right now. And I have you know who do you have more faith in, Hundley or Pickett? That's a question of the ages. Hundley or Pickett? I'll take the Ravens. Screw it. I'm taking the Ravens in that one. So, and you're going to be taking in the Steelers. So, that'll do it. So, let's move on. Do all of our picks. Uh, start out with the best bets. I gave you mine. Buffalo was my best bet. What are you going to do? Uh, I took San Francisco. I just think in Las Vegas is in full collapse. God, man. The, even with the, the quarterback change and nine and a half points, just no faith in those Raiders at all. So, San Francisco for you. Okay. I didn't see that one coming. And that'll bring us to our Super Contest picks. What are your best five for Week 17? I went with the Jags, the Giants, the Bucks, the Chargers, and the Bills. Hold on. Jacksonville, Giants, Bucks, Bills, and then who is the one that I missed? Char- Chargers. L.A. Chargers. Okay. So, I have Buffalo as well because that was one of my best bets. And then I also have Tampa Bay. So I'm with you on those two. Otherwise, I change it up. I picked Washington. I picked Philadelphia. I picked New England as my other three. Completely random super contest. I have not been good. Next week, after we're done with the holidays here and have a full week to prep and uh, the schedule goes back to normal, I'll do an update of the past three weeks so that we can figure out exactly where we are. I think that you've kind of pulled ahead of me in a couple of these, but we'll know more when I finally get back to it. Um, but I have not been good with the super contest at all. My... my uh, my money has been made on the teasers, but that's what I'm doing. So we both have Buffalo and Tampa Bay. You're then going Jacksonville, Giants, and the Chargers. I'm going Washington, Philly, and New England. So what are you going to do for your parlay? Uh, I picked San Francisco, the Chargers, and Buffalo. All right. Well, we both have Buffalo, so that one is the same. And then I did Washington and Philadelphia. Those were the two that I picked for my super contest uh, for the win there. You know, Philly, again, I just don't think that that five and a half is going to be enough. And then Washington, whatever. That's a short short favorite there at home at the two and a half. So you're going to go San Francisco in that line, plus the Chargers in the six and a half, and then Buffalo. So that brings us to our teasers. And this is where I have been on fire as I hit yet again with my teaser from last week. And that has brought my yearly total up to 12000 So I have now made about two grand, and that's a big comeback from down where I was around 7000 something. So I'm on a 5,000-point uh, uh, tear here, So and I'll take it. I like being positive. So anyway, but teasers, what are you going to do here for Week 17? I'm going to go with Cleveland. I'm going to go with the Giants. I'm going to go with Kansas City, and I'm going to go with Chicago. Wow. I mean, here's the beauty about this week in Teaserville is that there are a lot of legs that you can go to, specifically on the underdog side, which is where I think a bunch of what you've picked is, right? So the Browns, right? The Browns, you can boost that all the way up to 8.5. Do you really think the Commanders are going to win by a touchdown or more? You take the Giants, which I end up having, so we're the same there. And that brings the Giants basically down to a pick 'em. You have Kansas City, which I looked at, but, you know, yeah, the Broncos aren't good. That brings it down to six and a half. So a touchdown wins it there at seven. So it's not, you know, it's through the seven, I guess. I, you know, I was looking at it too, and I kind of threw it up, but I didn't go. You could go with the Broncos on the other side, though. You think the Broncos are going to lose by, by more than 18 and a half? <laughs> That's a lot of No, points. but. Some sites won't let you go do that. So that that was one option. That I looked, you know, the Bears were another one that I was looking at because the Bears, you know, right now underdogs by six. You throw the six on top of it, and that brings Chicago to twelve points. And Chicago has really fought here. You know, I mean, as long ever since they made the change to the offense and went behind the field's running quarterback style, they have you know played to the point that I didn't think twelve points there against Detroit. You know, some other ones, you could take your Raiders, make them 15 and a half. 
You could take the Rams, make them 12 and a half. You could blow the Steelers up to eight and a half. You'd like the Steelers to win. You could take them and go that all the way up to eight and a half on that one. Um, there, there was a lot to do. So you went Cleveland, New York, Kansas City, and then Chicago. Uh, we both had the Giants, like I said. Mine was, I, these were the ones I was looking at. New York, Philadelphia. Philadelphia becomes a pick em. Buffalo, where Buffalo, you actually push it down through the one, and then you push it all the way to five. So then, you know, the Bengals have to win by more than a field goal. So it was like, you know, it, do you think Buffalo at 12-3 and three is going to lose to the Bengals by more than four and a half points? Are they going to lose by, you know, I, I, if anything, the Bengals may be a field goal in that one. So I was looking at that one, and then I was looking at the Chargers, um, which is, you know, one of your picks for your parlay. And I was saying, you didn't take the Chargers and you bring them down to a pick em. And so I tried to figure out which one of those that I wanted to go with. And ultimately, I ended up going with the Giants, the Chargers, and then my throw-up was Philadelphia and Buffalo. And I just, I still kind of don't know what to do. Like, I like Buffalo, but Philadelphia, I think I'm going to go with Philadelphia. So I'm going to go New York, Philadelphia, and the Chargers as my teaser picks. So that'll bring us to uh, your, you know, your niche betting uh, field here, and that's prop bets. So prop bets to do. What are you looking at here? Uh, Franklin Zaire Franklin tackles eight and a half over. Okay, so you like the defensive side of the ball. Now I was tracking it for a while. How have you done with your defensive props? Very good. My defensive props are are even better than my offensive props. Yeah, I haven't really looked at defense. And defense is definitely, we've talked about it in years past. Like, the defensive props are fun because unless you play IDP, rarely do people follow the tackles all that much. And they are a pretty, I would say, consistent statistic, right? That, like, it doesn't really vary all that much over time. You know, so, I mean, Franklin and, uh, God, it's Franklin and I forgot the other one. I had both of them. Uh, Okiri. Right? Did I pronounce his name right? Oh, Kekere. Yeah. Like, they're, they both get, like, 8 to, what, 8 to 11 tackles a game? Uh, yeah, well, the Zaire averages a little more. Right. But Franklin's yeah. the has the higher tackle total, but they're both solid. Yeah. So, yeah. I went on the offensive side of the board. I ended up, uh, I, I'm going to go with Tom Brady here in over one and a half touchdowns. Because the way that the... the that the Buccaneers have played here down the stretch, it's been all all Brady. And Brady's had to get this done continually. I, I don't have real faith in their running game right now. White is okay. Um, you know, he's coming along as a rookie. Uh, you know, Fournette, I don't know. I'm, I'm not sold on him. So I would think that they're probably need to do it through the air. And, you know, there's a little, you know, the money's on the other side of this one, but I'm going to take uh, – Tam- Tom Brady on Tampa Bay and the over one and a half passing touchdowns. So that's it for the props. And now it's time for our betting segment. So here we go. Uh, I only did two things. So do you want to go first? Because I know you got a bunch. Yeah, I do. Uh, Sure. I'll go. So I have numerous, I mean, I went all sorts of angles because I was up in Jersey. So, I wanted to make sure that I, I got some bets in before I flew back to Florida. So I started off with a four-pick parlay. I have the Niners, the Vikings, the Chargers, and the Steelers. Okay. Uh, all money. They're all money line. You love Niners, those money lines. Vi- yep. Niners, Vikings, Chargers, Steelers. And my next one I did was, bear with me, uh, I did, did I do any more? Yes, I did. Uh, five pick teaser. I did the Eagles, the Chiefs, the Lions, the Niners, and the Bills. Yeah, well, there's Buffalo, right? So I was talking about that Buffalo pushing that through and then making them five points. Uh, yep. San Francisco, you obviously bring that down to the field goal range-ish. Detroit, you bring that down to basically a win. Kansas City, you're bringing that down to a touchdown. And then Philadelphia is a pick em. Yep. That's it. 
Uh, all right, so those are the two big parlays I did. Then I did college football playoffs. Ooh. Bowl games playoffs. Okay. Which is upon us tonight, 4 o'clock. So, yep. right, coming up here in about an hour. So, uh, going back to yesterday, I did a four-pick money line parlay, and I used Tennessee last night. Okay, so they, they won. Be, they were they, victorious. Yep. yep. Uh, I had Alabama, which I should have just taken the points. I don't know why I did money line. Okay. Uh, then I have Michigan, and I have Ohio State. Okay. So I got plus 2,000 odds on a four-pick money line parlay. That's pretty good. Yeah, take that. I, I haven't gotten into college betting really all that much. I probably I'll probably throw something on, on the games today just to have something in there. I haven't really yeah. looked at it. You know, it's not my jam, baby. Yeah, yeah. So, and then I did uh, another one for uh, the games that are on uh, New Year's Day or New Year's, uh, yeah, New Year's Day. Uh, I did Illinois, LSU, USC, and Penn State. Oh, okay. Then I did a anytime touchdown score four four way uh, uh, parlay. I got Mike Williams from the Chargers, Godwin from the Bucks, Ingram from the Jaguars, and Dotson from the Commanders. Okay. Yeah, Dodson's on a tear. He's been uh, he's been helping out fantasy teams that have had him here down the stretch big time. Yeah. So I got plus 5000 odds on that. And then the the most fun of all of the bets I made before I left was to pick the two Super Bowl teams and the result in the Super Bowl. So Oh, Jesus. Uh, they had That's a- aggressive. Okay. So what would you do with that? So so they have all of the – they have them all listed out. You just pick what, what you think. And I have the 49ers beating the Chiefs in the Super Bowl, and that was plus 2,500. Okay. You didn't have to pick the score, though, right? You just had to pick the two teams and what was the result? Yeah, they they have they have it listed. Uh, oh, hold on. I got work calling. Hold on one second. Um they have it all listed out, just a whole list of 49ers over Chiefs, 49ers over Bills, Eagles over Bills, Eagles over Chiefs, like that. Okay. All right, so you going to take that call because then I can do my, my picks here and then uh, – we'll No, I up. told him I call him. Okay. I told him I call him right back. All right, cool. All right, so you did San Francisco over Kansas City. Yeah. That was your bet. Okay. And what else do you got or is that it? That's it. Okay. Um, as for me, uh, I am working off the uh, 12,000 bankroll right now. So I'm going to go again just simply with – I've only been doing one bet the past couple of weeks. I'm going to do two this week. But one is really, you know, my my thing. And that's going to be the teaser that I was talking about. I'm going to end up doing the Giants, Philly, and the Chargers, I was thinking about hedging and then maybe putting another one with the Giants, Chargers, and Buffalo. I didn't know what to do. But I said, you know what? Screw it. Let's just keep it there. So I got the Giants to win, Philly to win, Chargers to win. So again, it's worked for me in the past couple of weeks. I like it here. I do think that Philadelphia is going to put some effort into getting this game done, won, and lock it up so that they can take next week off. We talked about the Chargers and then the Giants. I mean, look, the Colts are just not a good team. Giants blow it in this spot quite a bit, but their coaching has been really good this year. I'll give them that. Um, I don't, you know, they have no wide receivers and the team is flawed, but the coaching has been pretty, pretty outstanding. So Day Bowl is probably, you know, one of the, you know, coach of the year candidates. And so I think right now, if you bring that down to a pick them and take the Giants, I think that should be good. So Giants, Philly, and the Chargers, I'm going to do 500 for 1300. That was basically my bet last week as well. And then I wanted to get involved some other way so i took 100 bucks to do a, a four team bar uh, i'm going to do a parlay that's mixed between spreads and money lines 
So spread-wise, I'm going to take the Patriots and the two and a half. I also have them in the Super Contest. I'm going to take Buffalo and the one, which is my best bet of the week. And then I'm going to do the Giants and the Buccaneers money line. I guess I could have done the Philadelphia money line because basically doing the money line is doing basically the, the tease strategy here. Um, but I'm going to go Tampa Bay there instead of Philadelphia and just take them off because they were my question mark there. So Giants, Tampa Bay money line, Pats two and a half, Buffalo minus one, and I'm going to bet 100 for 781. And those were my two gambling choices for the week. So what do you guys got planned on for New Year's Eve? Obviously, with the young end, you're not going to be doing much, but did you get somebody to uh, watch them? Or are you going over to somebody's house? What are you guys doing? And you're not there. So, this has uh, ended the way that it started, with me just uh, kicking myself in the balls. Like, that's what it is. It's that uh, Have you ever seen that meme where it's some guy standing there and somebody standing opposite them just kicking them in the nuts? That's kind of what the beginning and end of this podcast has been. Uh, but it has been a crazy holiday season. I am thankful that it is over. The kids had a blast. I hope your family and loved ones had a good time as well. Good luck with all of your week 17 bets. And I am sure my brother would uh, tell you the same if he was here. Um, the, unfortunately, the, the FaceTime call fell. So we is not here. So I'm just vamping as I crash into the ending, which is, again, per the usual. You do this for like three, four years, and sometimes you just don't get better. Sometimes you get worse. No finger. Oh. You are a stupid asshole. Oh, I am. I am. And boom goes the dynamite. You betcha. Leroy Sometimes. I actually can't believe what I just saw. Oh, no. Believe it, Chris. It's about to get all stupid up in here. It always does. It never changes. Your organization's terrible. I mean, the organization? Really? You're going to go that length on? I mean. Don't be rude. Well, are you saying that to me? I'm not being rude. I'm trying to defend myself here. You're the one coming over the top with all these stupid comments. That guy is a disgrace to the uniform. Mike, I, you know, there are better podcasters around here. I fully understand that. But, uh, you know, we do okay for what we've got. You know, they stay. No, we do not, Chris. That's not fair. You know, that is definitely not fair. We're definitely above average. Anyway, peace out. Happy New Year. Enjoy.